Tony, there wasn't much in it, but they got it wrong? Yeah, uh, we've done a full review this morning, and uh, when we go frame by frame, it, uh, in, a, uh, in less than a second, they're, uh, they're incorrect. How do you correct it going forward? Uh, we're looking at a, a number of mechanisms for the, uh, the timekeeper and the video ref to count down uh, the time, which will hopefully alleviate the problem in the future. Will that start from this weekend? Uh, we're looking to I implement it as soon as possible. So uh, the Dragons have said that it's cost them two points. Uh, as I said, I'm disappointed that we got it wrong, as I am in all the decisions that the, uh, the match officials get wrong. Um, but we're working hard to, uh, to improve our performances and, um, and there's a number of factors that go into, uh, into the determination of all matches. The Dragons. Can I just ask you, mate, you mentioned it took freeze-frame technology to work it out for you guys. So how did, what about the referee? I mean, obviously you just had to act on what you could do on the dark. Mate, it's a very, very difficult decision and it was in real time. Uh, as I said, for us to determine that he's incorrect uh, took freeze frame. Uh, and that's, uh, that, that took us a long time to achieve that. So um, it was a really, really difficult decision for the referee on the field and he had a lot to consider at that stage. Would he have been able to, once Melbourne had scored the try, would he have been able to go upstairs and ask the video ref, mate, I'm not sure whether it happened, can you just check it? Yeah, currently he can't do that um, because the ball's not played. And uh, the video referee is restricted from the, uh, the play of that. So the actual error is the reason why you can't actually check it. So do you need to change it along those lines? Oh, we're looking at all areas uh, to, to change it. But initially, we're, we're implementing uh, the, the countdown process and, uh, uh, as a first point, uh, And we're looking at reviewing all the systems. Um, I understand that they're, uh, they're disappointed, like I am. Have you spoken to Adam and Matt? I mean, what are their, what are their feelings? Yeah, yeah, I've spoken to Matt and, um, you know, they're professional referees and, uh, and, we, and we take our craft uh, very, very seriously. And, uh, of course, they're, they're disappointed that they got it wrong. So, so can you just clap? errors at the moment, sorry? Uh, there's errors in all games. Uh, is this is obvious, mate. Um, as I said, there's a lot of decisions that they make. Some are wrong, some are right. Uh, not every decision that we get, uh, that we make is right, but in real time, as I said, this was a really, really difficult decision. But apart from this one, there seems to be a bit of a crisis in confidence. Oh. I mean, we're seeing players that aren't penalised in games and yet they're cited afterwards. They're like penal penalised. Players, for incidents that aren't even worth a penalty in a game, I mean, I think Frank Pritchard the other day wasn't penalised and he was then match review committee does it. I mean, oh. the players are saying that, hang on, how's that working out? These guys are getting suspended for things that they're not even penalised for in a game on when the, when the video referees had a chance to have a look at it. Uh, I, I, there's the referee makes the decision in live time. Uh, as you know, that there's always been a mechanism in place for players to be reviewed on match review committee. Um, that's always been open, uh, and there's a full process that goes on on that. For, for me, it's about our referees on field making the right decision the majority of the time. They make a lot of decisions, uh, and I'm comfortable with how they've performed in the in, in the opening rounds. The last few weeks, Robbie Farris criticised the whole scenario around full time and you know when sirens go. He said it's going to cost someone two points. Potentially has now. Should this have been looked at before? That has cost someone two points. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure about what Robbie Farah said, but I, I can indicate that on this decision we were wrong, uh, as I said to you. But it's a, It's less than a split second. So can, yeah, can you just go through what that again, okay. basically the, the split second. Yeah. <laughs> the split second decision is this. Um, uh, the re once the siren is sounded, if the ball has been played, it is to play to the end of the next tackle. Uh, for the ball to be played, it, it has to be played backwards, um, and that's in the press release. When it's played backwards, uh, obviously play continues to the next phase, which will be the try. Uh, when you freeze frame it, the ball has not been played backwards as the siren first sounds. I was watching the game, I think a lot of people were watching the game live, and it, 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 there was no freeze frame. You could see that that siren had sounded before he played the ball. Is, was that an excuse for well, the refs? Oh, well, uh, it's not an excuse for the refs. That's the, the, the accuracy of what we've done uh, by freeze framing it this morning is exactly that. It, uh, the ball is less than a split second after, within a second after being played correctly. So, so, so what do you say to Dragons coach Steve Price? I've already, I've, I've spoken to Steve Price and I've indicated to him that we got the decision wrong and it was a, a very difficult decision in a split second live, uh, live time decision. I made the conversations with Steve and I, um, but I can tell you that um, he understood the, uh, the the enormity of the decision. He also understood where I was coming from. So where will Matt be running this week? Sorry, where where will Matt be running this week? Uh, Matt will be in first grade.
What about, have you seen the Josh Dugan onside, offside? Um, so that led to the, the Dragons try? Yes, I have. Um, I was comfortable with the process. Um, there's, uh, the live decision was a try. Uh, the touch judge called the uh, chasers onside. Uh, the video referee reviewed it uh, in detail. Uh, there are angles that uh, indicate that the, uh, as the ball is kicked, the, obviously the 40 metre line is there. Dugan's foot is above the line at that stage. Um, but I'm comfortable with the process they did in conf having insufficient evidence to overturn that decision. So the process, what about the decision? As I said, I'm comfortable with the decision because they applied the correct process, which is if there's insufficient evidence to overturn a decision, they go with the live decision. What about the clocks? I mean, I know, I know the players and the referees go off the official match clock, but on TV and on the day, sometimes it, they, they, they differ. She's kind of confusing for punters. And yeah, oh, I, 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 understand, I understand if you watched the, the, the coverage last night, the 80 minutes was up well before the, the siren went. So for a billion dollar game, maybe as I said, you can see in the in the uh, press release, there's a, there's a, the opportunity to look towards moving towards that uh, and linking that clock up with the countdown. Um, as to the broadcasters, I can't comment on that. Has the timekeeping been a problem this year, mate? Uh, I'm, I'm not responsible for the timekeepers, but um, the timekeeping from mine, I'm not I'm, I'm not sure there's been a problem. I don't know anything that has been a problem. I understand that there's a difficulty, that there's a difference in the broadcast clock as opposed to the timekeeper's clock, but I'm not responsible for that. It probably doesn't come down to this, Tony, but whoever presses the siren button, I'm a bit ignorant there, is that an independent NRL official? Y yeah, it is. It's a timekeeper who's appointed by the NRL. So what's the process like now? Do the, oh, sorry. Do the refs just, if they hear the siren, they, they believe for the time? No, the video ref's not indicating that that's, that's 80 minutes? Uh, he, he wasn't last night, and, and that's what I said to you. One of the processes that we're putting in place is a countdown process um, to hopefully rectify this problem. I'm looking to use it this weekend.